Welcome everybody. Here we are with our first flip lecture of the year and today's going to be all about resource management. And so our content objective is to really understand the different perspectives and how you go about uh, managing resources. And we're going to like take a look at two guys that really kind of de develop two different schools of thought on how we can, can do that. And so I'm going to set this up a la Cornell. I'm a believer. And so go ahead and draw your line in right there, and I would write your essential question at the top of your notes, which is, who are Gifford Pinchot and John Muir, and how are their uh, views different? And so Gifford Pinchot, I'm going to uh, guess most people haven't really heard of, and John Muir, we probably all have heard of, uh, or most of us. And so we're going to start with Gifford Pinchot. And so what I would do is, uh, you can hit pause on this, which is kind of the beauty of it. And if you want to just write down the notes, I typed them up rather than having you guys guess what I think is important. And I think it's definitely more legible than me writing them out. And so you can hit pause or you can just kind of listen and write at the same time. But we're going to go ahead and go for it. So I hope you find this interesting. So Gifford Pinchot, just a little background on him. He was alive in the 1800s. And he came from a wealthy family, and they, they weren't exactly bourgeois, but they were definitely like high, kind of high rollers, high society in the East Coast. And, but his family actually made their money off of logging. And so at the time, it was you know definitely a different time. So picture the open frontier, and you know a lot of homesteading still going on, and, and definitely probably some tragedy of the commons going on too, because you know, people are just kind of going for it. And so it was kind of a liquidation of forests. And uh, his father made it, they made a lot of money. And so Gifford Pinchot goes to school, goes to college, go, he actually went to Yale. And when he got done, the story goes that uh, apparently his father was feeling a little guilty about how they had gone about making all their money at the expense of, you know, all this forest. And so he sent Gifford Pinchot back to Europe, to France to study forestry. And so in the United States, they didn't really have a forestry school. And so they're, they're, they were logging, but it wasn't exactly, a, there wasn't a science to it. People weren't studying, you know, what's the best way to do this? People were just kind of like cutting down everything. It's, we're just lucky they didn't have chainsaws, otherwise maybe there'd be nothing left. Uh, so Gifford goes to France and learns about forestry. He comes back and he does a couple important things. The first thing he did was he started the first forestry school in the US at Yale. And, but more importantly, he also started or had a big hand in starting the U.S. Forest Service. And that's the, the uh, they, they manage the national forest and there's, there's hundreds. Uh, and it's all managed through the Department of Agriculture through the, the federal government. So the whole theme of the U.S. Forest Service is conservation. But when we hear the word conservation now, it's kind of a buzzword and it's kind of like the word green. Conservation back then kind of meant something differently. So Gifford Pinchot's whole thing was how do you manage resources so you can maximize your yield? How do you get the most out of the forest? You know, and so how do you take trees but be able to come back and get more later, right? And so you wanted to basically max out without depleting your resources, which is what was happening before, you know, at the time. And so uh, he was very much like a utilitarian, and he was, you know, kind of seeing dollar signs. And he was all about the economy. Uh, and so with the National Forest, that's the whole, the whole setup. It's a, it's a multi-use um, public land is what it is. And so if you've been to the National Forest, which I'm going to guess a lot of you have, like Lake Tahoe is a National Forest. Um, Lake Tahoe is in a, actually in a National Forest, and then there's another forest called Tahoe National Forest right next to it. Uh, which doesn't actually have the big lake. But uh, at any rate, you probably went and you went camping or hiking or did something kind of recreational, which is important. But you've got all these other uses like logging. And so this is uh, the Kootenai National Forest in Montana. And if you log a forest, obviously that's going to have an impact. And so you've got to, you know, you're going to take the trees, which is habitat. You're going to have, you know, these days you've got machines like this. And then, you know, how do you get all those trees out of the forest? You've got to build roads, maybe a whole network of roads. Maybe there's helicopters coming in. Maybe people live there, uh, the loggers. And so it definitely, you know, it, it has an impact. Uh, you can also go mine, you can do mining. So this is a uranium mine in uh, South Dakota, I believe, is where the Custer Forest is. Uh, and then you've got grazing happening all across the United States, all different types of public lands. And uh, all that can definitely still lead to a tragedy of the commons because these res resources are public. No, but they're not private. Uh, you could also, I mean, they've got hydroelectric dams on national forests, and so it's just really, it runs the gamut on different uses. But the whole idea is, is we're going to conserve the resources, we're going to manage the resources. 
so they don't get wiped out. So we're going to cut it off there for Gifford Pinchot. Come back in a second, because John Muir's part two, we're going to cut it up so we can just make it a little bit more manageable. But John Muir's super interesting, too. And so hopefully we'll see you again in a second.